This is JSA TV and JSA Podcast, the newsroom for telecom and data centers professionals. I'm Dean Perrine, EVP at JSA, coming to you from ITW 2020, the virtual ITW. Joining me today is Mr. Mike Collins. Mike is the Vice President of Marketing at Connected to Fiber. Connected to Fiber provides a location engagement platform for network buyers and sellers that uses detailed location intelligence to provide insights and automate processes around deal participation, account targeting, and product pricing. Mike, welcome as always to JSA TV. Great to be here, Dean. Thanks for inviting me. You got it. So Mike, uh, you recently announced some significant news regarding channel sales transformation. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, good, good question. So um, we had recently announced at ITW the um, launch of our uh, serviceability portal. So essentially what that is, it's a capability for our network provider customers to selectively advertise their uh, serviceable location information to essentially their channel community. And from an end user perspective, essentially what they'd be able to do is search a particular provider has location, uh, serviceability at a certain location, uh, understand the products available um, at that location, and even the pricing kind of for the end user uh, at that location. So uh, really, these, this type of capability enables a lot of our customers to be considered in more deals uh, within the market. Um, and there's, a, there's a, an interesting also kind of additional uh, effect of that is within our platform, the connected world, uh, users, our network provider customers uh, will be able to gain insight into all of the locations that were kind of queried in their instance. So they'll be able to use the information for future pricing decisions, right, if they're getting a lot of queries for a particular location, sending out prices, but not getting the orders possibly they need to lower price. Uh, and they'll also be able to use that information for building decisions. Are there certain locations in close proximity to their network that you know, a lot of their channel community is requesting, but they're not building to? So that should also be you know, a, a good capability that uh, our customers can have for, for future revenue growth. Outstanding. So, Mike, let's keep uh, on the customer tip there. Let's let's keep going. A lot of com a lot of uh, a lot of competitors, a lot of uh, 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 you know um, industry players have been relatively silent over the last few months. Um, you guys really have it. There's been a lot of activity on the the partner and the customer side, um, really since the beginning, the end of last year, the beginning of this year. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, we've had uh, quite a few uh, customer announcements. Uh, we've done some joint announcements already this year with um, companies like Unity, uh, IFN, uh, Alluvion, Beyond Reach. Um, we have a lot more more to come on that uh, on that uh, dimension as well, which is very exciting. A lot of customers using us for kind of transforming their their uh, go to market operations, um, and we'll be soon kind of an announcing more of our kind of technology partnerships uh, within the space to to help customers kind of integrate connected world more effectively into, uh, into their operations, which is, which is great. Um, I think a lot of what we've been talking about um, really kind of plays into our uh, ecosystem kind of ethos. So, you know, certainly our ultimate objective as a company is to help our network provider customers uh, digitally transform their, uh, their operations to quickly uh, and sustainably achieve uh, revenue growth. Um, and, you know, a lot of what we build uh, ultimately comes from a place of having deep location insight, uh, being able to understand for any commercial location in the world, here are the networks that are servicing that location, or the, um, the tenants within that location, uh, and then help take that information and make better decisions from kind of planning to pricing. Um, there's a particular kind of heritage and history we have around uh, the wholesale world, uh, kind of a partnership oriented uh, phase of the market, which uh, allows customers to more collaboratively engage with each other for, for the sake of winning deals. We think that's fairly unique um, within the connectivity space because you know, no provider can uh, service every location. Um, so we've really kind of invested heavily in, in those types of uh, approaches, that type of ecosystem approach, the serviceability portal is a piece of that. But um, a lot of our customer announcements recently have been around, you know, how do these network sellers identify uh, serviceable locations uh, within their footprint and then communicate with their partners to, uh, to participate in deals. And, and we've had certainly in the past a lot of uh, network buyers that have used us to help identify partnerships, to help manage those partnerships and serviceable locations within our platform, ultimately do the same thing to, to participate in deals. So 
I really think that a lot of these announcements as well have kind of driven, been driven back to this type of ecosystem ethos we have as a company. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's exactly what it sounds like. It sounds like you're building a substantial ecosystem. Um, but let's, let's talk about that just a little bit more. So as far as you know, your eco, e ecosystem of uh, network buyers and sellers, um, there are trends that are kind of driving that, that buying and selling. And, and you guys are facilitating that, that, uh, that ecosystem and frankly making it easier for them, uh, much easier for them. But what are some of the trends that, are, that all ultimately are impacting um, those, that ecosystem? Sure, yeah, so you know, a few come to mind. Uh, certainly, I would say that there's still natural kind of competitiveness within the connectivity market. Uh, a lot of our customers, you know, uh, are coming to us just figuring out how do I monetize the um, the existing network routes I've already built, right? Certainly, they have not um, monetized every location, you know, every every mall, your school, etc., kind of along their routes. Um, so they come to us uh, for that. We still think that's going to continue that natural growth, um, as well as naturally figuring out how to expand. You know, folks are still on, you know, uh, interested in understanding. How do we build new routes? Where do we build new routes? What routes and um, um, that we ultimately are considering? What are the optimal paths that we take uh, to build those? So that's certainly a um, trend that natural competitiveness is going to continue. Um, uh, what we hear a lot about as well is stuff that I'll, you know many industry players are talking about: 5G, SD WAN. You know, folks in, in our uh, ecosystem are figuring out how to capture revenue opportunities associated with you know, servicing those types of um, those trends, right? Identifying where small cells are um, from an SD-WAN perspective, being able to help those enterprises convert um, to this, you know, network driven, uh, software driven network um, and be able to, um, you know, do that effectively by particularly identifying the right partners to work with um, for that particular location. Um, the final thing I'd say would be more around kind of what's recently occurred with, with our pandemic uh, that's been going on in the world. Um, certainly they're trying, I think a lot of customers are trying to figure out ways to adapt kind of a post COVID-19 world. So a lot of that, you know, we're hearing from our customers is, you know, how do I um, engage customers? How do I engage prospects? How do I engage partners kind of more effectively in the digital sphere when I can't rely on meeting them at events or going out and physically prospecting? Um, so that's certainly an element of that. Uh, in addition to saying, you know, how do I craft a new strategy for, for servicing enterprises where not all their employees are going to, to the office anymore, right? There's going to be some residential um, needs from a connectivity perspective as, as folks kind of continue to, to work from home. So, you know, what we're seeing and, and what I believe, you know, our customers are going to see is a continuation of kind of the natural competitive dynamics um, within the market as well as things like F5G, SD-WAN, and being able to service customers and, and, and sites as those trends continue to emerge. And then obviously, you know, how do we figure out how to adapt to this, to this world after kind of COVID-19? Yeah, well, it sounds like you've got your hands full over there. <laughs> it's a fiber mine. That's right. That's right. So for our viewers that uh, want to learn more, where should they go? Sure, yeah. So uh, the easiest way to learn more about us is um, head to our website, www.connectedtofiber.com, uh, or we're pretty active on LinkedIn. Uh, if you just search Connected to Fiber as a company um, on LinkedIn, um, you should be able to kind of keep up to date with, uh, with the latest going on. Excellent. Mike, thank you very much for joining us, us today. We really appreciate it. And, and thank you, viewers, for watching JSA TV and listening to JSA Podcasts. We'll see you soon.